Um, Dr. Sunila Garg, let me begin with you and just get a bit of understanding on how India is looking at these cases. Bottom line is that we are looking at a variant of concern that WHO has now flagged off with utmost responsibility and also with severity. But we still do not know enough about this. In India, we haven't reported any cases of the Omicron just yet and across the world, we have seen no deaths identified or linked with this variant as well, just to have that clear. Uh, thank you, Sonal. Uh, for, first of all, I'd like to say that this variant of concern was reported by WHO on 26th of November. And the thing which I'd like to say over here is that the virus as of now has undergone 30 mutations at the spike protein hmm. and 10 mutations at the level of receptor binding level. Okay. So, in terms of, you know, as far as the virus is concerned, the transmissibility is more, infectivity is more. You see, it can have the immune escape. Hmm. Another important part is it can overwhelm the systems also. And we need to be watchful as of now. From our country's perspective, what I like to say is that we have got 122 crore people who have been vaccinated till date. We still have a journey to go approximately, you know, about 62 crore plus people with regard to vaccination. Hmm. So we have to quickly do that part also hmm. and watch the situation very, very carefully. Right. Another thing which but I would like Gart, to say is that... If I can interrupt for a minute. You know, you made that very important point that I've also been reporting all day about how the spike protein is actually showing, uh, the mutation that it's showing is actually 10 in the case of this current variant of concern Omicron over there. This compared to Delta that created havoc in our country and across the world as well, which was just two. So just to put those Definitely. two numbers in comparison, uh, what exactly does this tell us? How exactly do you see Omicron versus the Delta? See, this has gone several rounds of more mutation also. The reason being that probably one of the important concepts which is being there is that it has undergone several rounds of mutation in a HIV positive immunocompromised individuals. That's where the virus can multiply many more number of times. Hmm. And thereby you see it, the virus, you know, the whole of the vaccine concept is that, and since I said it is mutated at the level of spike protein, and that is where you see, and the point, that is the point of attachment also. So right. where, you know, our antibodies will come and, you know, respond to the virus also, whether they are vaccine-made antibodies or mm. they are, you know, due to infection. So right. there is a phenomena, you know, where the virus is going to escape. So that is important thing. And also at the level of receptor binding domain mm. also. That means where it is entering the cells. Mm. Earlier the cells were responding. Now, you know, it can invade with a greater, uh, I'll say, force. Right. And many, many times, you know, it's I understand a lot of these technical details, but bottom line really of what Dr. Garg is also saying is the fact that we do not know a lot of things about this variant, but what we do know for sure is that it is going to be much, much more transmissible than compared to the last variant of concern that we had, which was basically Delta, right? Having understood that, the question is what about severity of the disease? We don't have, again, enough data to bank this on. But uh, Dr. Singh, if you could come in at this point and talk to us about that. So details that we've been picking up from South Africa, at least at the moment, talk about. Interestingly, there is no loss of smell that is being seen in South African patients with the Omicron. There is no loss of taste. There is no bringing down or the need for oxygen support as well. They are seeing a lot of these patients can be treated with home care. That has to be a huge plus, at least with the information so far. Yeah, thank you, Sonal. So very nicely, uh, Dr. Sunila Garg also mentioned, and you know, you are whole day the NDTV is doing good work job that you know you are educating the people. But you know, the RVD, what you know, you uh, probably Dr. Sunila Garg answered. But I would like to re-emphasize that you know, receptor binding protein, and you said that what is the difference between the if there are two mutations and ten mutations? So it is like that. It is binding will be like this. So very strong binding, and that will make this virus highly highly infectious so that is number mm. one the second thing is that you know uh, the number of cases reported so far is, is still in few hundred only so therefore right now the you know loss of appetite or loss of smell or loss of you know taste these things they are being you know studied and who also said that right now it will be very difficult to conclude that you know this is the symptom is specific for this variant or this is not so mm. therefore 
we have to be concerned about that this is a mutation having the mutant which hmm. is having many mutations and obviously hmm. who has warned that if delta can do havoc as you very rightly said this is expected this is only expected i am saying it is hmm. expected to be more infectious and this is also expected that it will evade the immune system whether it is after vaccination or natural infection so this is really worrisome because uh, the good thing of course is that as you mentioned that so far the number of cases even though it is less but it is very true that so far there is no death and there is no oxygen right. demand these right. are the good so things so three crucial questions every time a variant of concern comes in right uh, Uh, transmissibility severity of disease and immune escape let me take the third question to dr gang as well we spoke about the first two with our other panelists when it comes to immune escape what do we know about this variant just state i understand the science behind finding out is a little peculiar because it is obviously tried on different people to see how the escape actually works if you could just break it down for our viewers please uh, thank you sonal thank you very much for inviting me now as dr seven singh has just now elaborated on the fact and as dr garg has also said that most of the antibody which are formed are against the spike protein hmm. that is the antibodies which can be produced either due to the disease or due to the vaccine which has been given are are targeted against the spike protein right and the mutations have occurred on the spike protein hmm so if a patient has been infected before or has been vaccinated when the virus enters the body it tries to uh, escape the immune system and that is what is happening with the mutation that is what is which have occurred the body is unable the body's immune system is unable to target the virus and so the virus escapes the immune system and infects us so this is what is called the the immune escape and that is the one reason why we expect that large number of people large number of population who have either previously had the disease or who have been vaccinated may still be a target of getting the disease mm. once again and that so is the real concern hmm. yes that is that is the main concern hmm. about the severity etc hmm. we do not have much of an idea hmm. but what is clear is that we have to keep on maintaining covid appropriate behavior and try and see that maximum number of people are vaccinated and try and see that we are not ambitious right. enough at but this time but dr nan can you just make this clear it was a beautiful explanation thank you for that by the way just want to understand will the present vaccines give no protection at all or are you saying there will still be a certain level of protection might not really add up to a uh, you know full sort of efficacy of the vaccine okay now the thing is that most of the vaccines which we have are targeted against the spike protein right and the mutations have occurred in the spike protein only as most of the vaccine the uh, mutations have occurred in the spike protein so the vaccines may not be in uh, be effective against the virus except the vaccines which are not against the spike protein only so the chances of the patient getting infected those who have been vaccinated by a vaccine which targets the spike protein the chances of getting reinfected remain high and what about those who have natural immunity who actually got the disease big a pardon i lost you in between and what about those people who have natural immunity who actually got and recovered from covid now again the same thing is that people who had it the antibodies which have been formed are against spike protein itself hmm. so the bad mutation of occurred in the spike protein the chances are that they are also susceptible hmm. that they will also be susceptible to get the infection the infection once again right i know i have to wrap up but very quickly dr dang i have one more question from you when it comes to detection of this uh, entire variant of concern we had some reports and who also stating that perhaps the rt pcr test can actually tell you whether or not this is omicron is that true i'm glad that you asked me this question sonal because most of the kits which we are using at the moment are targeted against the other genes besides the sg like what kits we are using at least in most of the lab in india target the e gene the rd rp gene and the ng so once we target these genes we are able to identify that the patient is positive for covid or not so but we cannot say that whether it is due to 
uh, whether his gene is present or not, or whether it is uh, due to one this uh, mutant virus. Hmm. Now here I want to emphasize there's something called S gene target failure. Hmm. Like the certain kids in the market which have got a large number of genes, multiple genes against which uh, the test is performed. Now if we see, like for example, if we have a kid which is having say E gene, uh, N gene, RDRP gene, along with that is also having S gene. The other genes will get test positive and the S gene test negative then we can say by proxy, by I just see. by surrogate interpretation, right. that the patient is having Omnimicron and that patient, that sample should immediately be sent for sequencing. The ultimate diagnosis, hmm. the ultimate, uh, I guess the conclusion will depend only on the mutation. So on the mutation study to say to tell us hmm. whether it is the variant virus or hmm. it is the whole virus itself.